Now, let's figure out subject and predicate. Yeah, I think we need four people. Oh, can, can I do another phrase? Miss Steven. Yes. Are you serious, Colby? Yeah. Miss Steven. Why is it Miss Steven? We can do But it is an L. But every part of speech is an L. Is it now? Is it now? Is it now? No way. Can I be Adjective. What? It's like a noun to verb. No. You can find all sorts of interesting things. I do noun. Hey, now we can be Okay, so let's look at what we found on the board. Let's turn our attention back up to the board. First off, do you agree uh, with the identified subject predicate and subject predicate? Looks like we have two sets. So subject we can predicate. rule out simple I. We can definitely rule out that this is a simple sentence. Absolutely. It's going to either have to be, what are our other choices, Ainsley? Um, complex ICCI, complex ID, and complex DI. Compound I, comma CCI, yeah and complex. All right, so back to the parts of the sentence. We've got a subject predicate. In the first clause, what kind of a predicate do we have? Um, Molly, what kind of predicate in the first clause? Yeah, it's an action verb. Action verb, okay. So action verb. So if we have an action verb, what will we look for? Sefer, what will we look for if we have an action verb? We would look for the... Um, Direct object. Okay. And if there is one, uh, what question will we ask ourselves to find out if there is one? Well, um, the first one we would do, Hayden didn't know what. <laughs> Hayden didn't know what? <laughs> what? Is there a clear answer to that? Um, to do. To do. Well, he didn't well, know what to do. do. So there's our direct object. Mm -hmm. Sapphire, would you go identify it? Yep. And in the sec oh, and then we have a direct object, so what are we going to check for? Go ahead. Indirect object. And if there's an indirect object, where are we going to find it? Where will we find the indirect object? In front of the direct object. In front of the direct object. Is there one? No. No, there's only a pronoun in front of the direct object, and that won't be our indirect object. Object is going to be a noun. Okay, let's go on to the next clause. We've got subject predicate. What kind of predicate do we have? Um, in the second clause, we have an action verb. Very good. We have an action verb. Now, what question would we ask to find out about a direct object? He had never seen what. Very good. Is there a clear answer to that, Emery? A specter. Very good. There's your direct object. Would you please go identify it? Yes. Now, yes, Mary? Well, um, specter there, and then specter over there, R E, and then that one's E R. So which Remember when we read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens? Was we, still, we still have our list on the board of He's different like, ways he used to refer to a ghost. He didn't always say ghost. He said specter sometimes. He said shade. I know, but which one's sometimes? Right? Yeah. He said apparition. He oh, said phantom. It's different. Sierra, what do you want to add? I have something to add, answer the question. When um, the kind of person Charles Dickens is is where where they live. They have an R E instead of E R like we do. Right. It's kind of like oh. the book in the it's book. The an English oh. spelling in the witches live in England. It's like, just like, color. like the witch. Right. It's like the witches. They had they spell them because they live in England. So who's the other author you know that? Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl, right. He, spoke, he would have put the R in front of the E, wouldn't he? I really like that you noticed that, and I really like that you knew where you knew that from. Okay, we are ready to go on to line three, which is our um, phrase with Austin. Does anybody see any phrases besides the one that Austin is going to yes. identify? Now, as far as going down to the type of sentence, let's do type and then we'll do structure. So what type of sentence is this? Tyler? A 
exclamatory. <laughs> it's exclamatory. <laughs> um, and what is your tip off that it's an exclamatory sentence? Exclamation mark at the end. And so if it's an exclamatory sentence and it has an exclamation point at the end, how should it be read? Volunteer, not everybody at once. Sarah. I didn't know what to do, for he had never seen a specter before. I like it. You're really starting to use that exclamation point. Austin. Hayden didn't know what to do, for he had never seen a specter before. <laughs> Hayden didn't know what to do, for he had never seen a specter before. Okay, you see. We had two people already during this process identify two structures that it couldn't possibly be. Angela, you said it couldn't possibly be. That's a lie because there's two subject predicates, and they, you can only have one, and there's also a con conjunction. And there's a conjunction. Very good. And Maya, you said that it couldn't possibly be complex ID. This, it, um, complex ID does don't. They don't have commas, but this one has a comma right after it. Right in front of the conjunction, so it can't be ID. So with that in mind, we're down to only two choices, aren't we? And what do you think it is? It's a, it's a compound ICCI because it has a coordinating conjunction. And it's a fanboy. It is a fanboy. It is one of the first times we've used the four conjunction, isn't it? Most often you see and, or but, or or, and not real often do you see four. So it's kind of neat that we found a sentence with four in it. Would you please go write that up, Allison? Okay, that was cool because we pulled out a bunch of, a really, a whole bunch of interesting things.